Today we're going to be reacting to the newest Backrooms found footage video by VFX mastermind Kane Pixels. In the previous episode of the Backrooms, this guy fell into the Backrooms Bruh. and had to wander around for hours while being hunted down by this creepy humanoid thing. Honestly, that episode was very action-packed and I'm excited to see what happens in this one. Let's uh, let's not waste any more time. This is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. This is Backrooms tile lighting Backrooms lighting and tile survey. Async research, internal use only. Well, we're about to publish this on the internet. Bruh. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, we got a security camera. Nice. Okay. Tuesday. Okay. Taco Tuesday. This guy should be eating tacos. How could they make this video on a Tuesday and not include any taco references in the end? Bruh. This is this is this is disappointed. I'm I'm disappointed so far. So that's the back rooms, that's the threshold. I don't think I've actually seen Incredibly cold. Okay, it's cold. Dang, that sucks to be him. I don't, th I don't think they've ever shown anyone passing over into the back rooms before. This is the first time we've watched this. It looks like they have to go through a dual door system as to not, like, I don't know, get any of the back rooms bacteria into the real world. So it's really cold down there. That's interesting. Okay. No scary monsters so far. Okay, those are all just dudes doing their job. Okay. That's the threshold back into the real world right there. So, looks like they're doing some kind of work in here right now. Maybe they'll get attacked by a scary monster. Oh, they're going into the ceiling. Okay, yeah, they're examining the tiles. Ooh, there's gonna there's gonna be a scary there's gonna be like a terrifying monster in the ceiling. I already know it. Okay, they're just plot they're just plucking the tiles out. Hmm. Oh no, guys, guys, there's gonna be a jump scare. Uh, there's no insulation on top, and I'm seeing a bunch on the floor above. Well, that's odd. Why would they put insulation well, on the top the floor, but not the yeah, bottom one? The vents. Yeah, some of it's insulated, I think. Hmm. Insulated oh, vents. Yeah. Vent so they insulated yeah. the vents in this place, but not the top ceiling. That doesn't make any sense. That's, that's a bit weird. Maybe yeah, there's a lower so... reason for that. No What's the... I think that's the lighting unit. Has no rust, so it must be pretty new. It's more than one uh, floor, and I use that term loosely. Oh. We then attempted to cut power this? to the nearest fluorescent light fixture, a standard trougher. However, we were unable to isolate the power source oh. and the conduit remained locked, hmm. despite the absence of any visible external power supply. So the lights are just on on their own, is what she. So the lights are just—they don't have any power source. They're just always on. That's quite weird. That's quite paranormal. That, that's honestly pretty spooky. The source of electrical current remains unknown at this time. What what if it's the backrooms monster that's powering all the all the all them things the. The, the scary the scary bacteria monster is powering all the lights. That's my theory right now. Using an insulated toolkit, we carefully isolated the light fixture from its electrical conduit, uh, extracted mm. the trougher from the ceiling, and transported it back inside. Uh, so they're just pulling the back rooms apart now. They're just taking stuff um, off the ceiling. And they uh, a, a 0.5 meter sample of conduit was also taken. Uh, Interesting. All exposed wiring safely secured afterwards in the ceiling. So the ceiling tile extracted measures 1.27 meters by that's not standard meters, which that's not is yeah certainly not standard yeah yeah no, 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 normally those tiles are like well like 24 by 24 that 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 that's definitely wrong whoever built the back rooms is um not up to code i think that that might be like a violation of some kind of um definitely a building code violation i think async might have to um might have to fix that probably or whoever whoever owns the back rooms i don't know Maybe the bacteria it's monsters need to reconstruct the of, uh, mineral fiber. Uh, mineral fiber has a fissured texture with uh, mild tegular edges. So after so it's just like a normal ceiling tile. The composition of the tile. Interesting. Estimated 
is um, around 60% mineral wool. So it's like made out of like uh, minerals that they grind it up into like little, um, little, little, little string things. To salt or swag. Um, Interesting. Around 20% uh, slag. Prolite, which is, um, the hell is slag? Isn't that like? <laughs> does, doesn't that mean something else? Uh, primarily of silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide. Hmm. The rest is a uh, you know, fine mixture of. Um, so that's the kind of stuff these sealing starch, titles are usually made of in the real world. I think most people know that. Some organic fibers derived from plant materials. Hmm. Um, recycled Maybe the plant stuff. material is like the stuff that the backroom's monster is made of, and they're using it to build the ceilings. So the monster isn't just the monster, it's the whole backrooms that's an evil monster that's trying to eat people and kidnap their children. Hmm. Uh, but the light tropper housing is made of galvanized steel. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, she said galvanized steel. <laughs> <laughs> You know what would be funnier? If, if it was galvanized square steel. <laughs> uh, galvanized steel. <laughs> Alright, hold on. This is, this is a serious video. We have, to, we have to maintain a straight face, even though, even though the, the brain rot reference. Inside, the fluorescent bulbs are non-standard in proportion. What's next? Are there going to be skibbity toilets inside the light? <laughs> 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 Skibbity toilet. <laughs> Most closely resembling T12 bulbs. So mm. the four bulbs measure 1.2 meters in length with a diameter of 38.1 Interesting. Uh, I don't think I've seen fluorescent bulbs with that measurement before. Normally they're like, normally they're not that big. Like the tiles are a bit big. The fluorescent lights are a bit big. I think that, that's maybe because the scary backrooms monsters didn't build them correctly because they're stupid and don't know how to build things. So they didn't, they didn't, they don't know anything about building codes because they're stupid. So they just built the, the incorrect length fluorescent, fluorescent lights and, and tiles and stuff. Honestly, I think, I think that we have to have someone see to that. But that all the end and the rest contain uh, all components. Phosphor coating, the calcium uh, halophosphate for converting. Calcium halophosphate, that's interesting. I think it's normally like. I think it's something different in most fluorescent uh, lights. Uh, I don't know. Visible light. Um, mercury vapor a, in, in, in a small quantity, which. That can't be healthy. The, the ultraviolet light. Mer this, has, this has mercury inside of it. That's definitely not up to code, I don't think. Um, argon gas. And again, this is all. That's normal ar argon. These, uh, Fluorescent bulbs. I don't, I don't um, think mercury is standard for fluorescent bulbs. I feel like that's maybe maybe it's because this was in the 90s. They didn't care as much, you know. They used to put asbestos in anything. Oh, that's an inert gas that assists with the uh, with regulating the current and, and really starting the bulb. <laughs> what, what, if, what if instead of argon gas, it was neon? <laughs> neon. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they are connected via a G13 base, which is a standard two-pin base with 13 millimeter spacing for electrical connection. So the wiring connected to the fixture is PVC insulated copper, which appears standard. interesting. Again, uh, so they, that, so you're saying they insulated the wires, but not the actual ceiling of the building. That's why it's so cold in there, because they don't insulate the goddamn ceilings. The diffuser over the bulbs is made of polymethyl methacrylate, uh, mm. which is, again, commonly used for its light diffusion properties. I mean, it's, it's, it's what we have in the building here. Very standard. Interesting. Um, but we, we so also inspected the, the architects of the back rooms thought, okay, we're just going to throw all these building codes out the window, except for the little cover uh, cases that we put around the fluorescent bulbs. Those we're going to make super normal and standard. Everything else, let's just build it all out of whack. Which is of the electromagnetic type. Um, there's, there's some variation in how they're being manufactured now. This one contains a laminated steel core. That doesn't look very clean. designed to operate at 60 hertz. So the ballast emits a prominent 120 hertz hum. Ah! This oh my god, that was a flashbang. That was a jump scare right there. That was that was scary, bro. Majority, if not all I thought I thought I just died. Like I thought I saw the light there. That was scary. Okay, so it's saying it emits a 120 hertz hum. That's the iconic humming sound that the back room emits. So if they find a way to cut off the power, 
then that stupid humming sound isn't gonna isn't gonna be heard anymore in the background. The nice. That we've assessed thus far, um, mostly just through through uh, simple curing, but but this is is, is due to uh, magnetostriction um, and core vibration. Oh, the, the that makes sense. Exactly. I was. I was, I was always trying to wonder, why did these things make noise? But it's obviously the magnetostriction. Why, why didn't I think of that? By loose elimination plates or degradation of the insulating potting material over time. Um, so it's definitely an indication that this has been running for a little bit. I mean, so the, the lights are old. That's why they make so much noise. They've been there for a while. That means the backrooms is old. That might be why some of this stuff is like non-standard, because it was built at a time where the building codes were different. And so the, uh, the, the stuff is like outdated. That's why we need the new backrooms. We need backrooms too. That would solve everyone's problems. Despite its age, the, the ballast is functional. Um, it's large proportions suggest it was built for a, a non-standard space. Not something you find in the majority. Yeah, of the honestly, the, I, I can tell that from the fact that the, the seal, I, can't, I still can't get over this. The ceiling tiles were, what was it? One meter point one to like something like that instead of 24 by 24 who the what kind of psychopath builds a ceiling tile of those dimensions that's like that the whole building might as well just be on fire at that point like what the hell for uh, most commercial spaces though that's something that that's not something i'm too familiar with truthfully now we we did find so material compositions all seem expected or, or or we don't we don't know what to expect here. They they they've seen everything we've looked at so far. Um, again, this is rudimentary early testing. Interesting. Everything seems pretty congruent with what you might expect from one of the uh, the trophy lights you could pull out of the ceiling in in this in this building right here. Um, so. Cool diagram, but what does this mean? What what is this representing? We got it. We got a person looking at a sphere. And the lights like bouncing off of it, is that showing like, like method for determining none is f which potential glare sources may be located. Oh, okay. So this is for like glare reduction. I see. This is interesting to the lore of the back rooms. Cause like, I thought this was just going to be a series about scary monsters, but this is about the horrors of poorly designed buildings. Nothing too strange, but, but it's maybe that maybe makes things seem stranger. Because um, we look at these lights, and, um, let's see, let's take it So, several labels um, were marked on, on various components oh. of the, the troffer. Um, so on the ballast, we, we found uh, markings for, uh, mark it as a universal ballast. So the bacteria monsters in the back rooms weren't the ones building the lights. It was just companies. I get it now. That's the that's what this series is trying to say. There might be scary monsters in the back rooms, but the real monsters are big corporations that make substandard products like this. That's 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 very eye-opening. Uh, type A, manufactured in 1975 with serial number A75. 1975. So that's like a little over like 12 years before this video takes place. So all the products are about 10 years out of date. It can't be that different. I think I think the products are just featured in this are just of poor quality. That's that's the, uh, the thing. The proper itself is stamped uh, 3x432, um, and that was manufactured in uh, 1973 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Those goddamn Pennsylvanians and their substandard sealing products. That, that's gonna be the, the main villain of this series. Is it, it isn't the monsters? It's the state of Pennsylvania. And it's going to end with async deciding you know i feel like the best purpose of the back rooms we're going to we're going to take the entirety of pennsylvania we're going to put it into the back rooms and then we're going to close the threshold and never let them out that's that's going to be the resolution to this series and and it is ul listed um and the bulbs um were manufactured by um, sylvania um in the marked uh, f40 sw hmm. uh, that's soft white um with so no right. visible date information, uh, it's left blank, but it is noted as made in the USA. So okay, so oh, that's a plot twist though, because they're made in the USA. They're not like it's not like a weird like foreign like import product. It's homegrown U.S. ceiling products here. 
Yeah, I think I think the, I think the main villain of the series is going to be the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, though outdated in design, the fixture. Yeah, very outdated. The, the stable operation Barely. of all the light fixtures in the subdivision points to a continuous, uh, potentially autonomous power source, which uh, still remains unidentified. The city of Pennsylvania is secretly powering the back rooms from hidden generators underneath the ground. That's the takeaway from this video. Okay, got it. Um, we're doing what we can. Um, the materials used are durable with minimal physical wear, suggesting they were built for long term, possibly mm. indefinite use. Indefinite, so they're infinite lights. So this concludes the initial findings. Um, further investigation is necessary. What does that say? Okay, we got 3x432. That was the stamping thing from earlier. I can't read what this logo says. Reading Pennsylvania, that's that's the um, that's the city that this was manufactured in, I presume. Uh, I can't read what that says. 1979. So Pennsylvania is the main antagonist of this series now. That's a plot twist I wasn't expecting. I wonder how the bacteria monsters are going to tie into this. Maybe, maybe the bacteria monsters are all from Pennsylvania. That's the... They're all ex-Pennsylvanians who were thrown into the back rooms and forgotten about, and that's why they're trying to they're trying to get revenge on the humans for throwing them into the back rooms and acting like they were never real. So the pencil so the the bacteria monsters are now Pennsylvanians. That's a weird plot twist, honestly. Okay, so overall this video took the series in a weird direction I wasn't expecting, but you know, I don't mind. Uh, I like to see some creativity in the market. Um Yeah. Yeah, uh, what we can learn from this, never build your ceiling titles below standard, because um, that's just, or, or above standard, just build the standard ceiling tiles or else you're just a bad person, like objectively, if you if you build ceiling tiles that are not up to code. Um, make sure your fluorescent lights, uh, when, you, when you build fluorescent lights, make sure they don't make a buzzing noise or else you're also a bad person. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe, Follow Real Sir Sandman on Instagram for the funniest reels you will ever watch. Join the channel membership for the low, low price of $2 a month to support me and get early access to stuff that I may or may not release in the future. Or just to be a nice person, I guess. Have an awesome rest of your day, YouTube. I will see you in the next one.